Clash Royale League is the pinnacle of Clash Royale competition, so it should be hard at every single stage, right? Well, nothing seems to be as difficult, as bloodthirsty, as brutal as stage number three was. 128 players whittled down to just our top 32. Hello, and welcome to Three Crowns. I am Rich Slate, and joining me as always, my friend Andrew Guy, and rounding out the squad, two-time CRL regional champion Joshua A.C. Sharon. Andrew, the 20 win challenge, crazy hard. Ladder, of course, absolutely brutal, but this stage three seemed like it was the roughest of all, the hardest for every one of our competitors. Yeah, I think bloodbath is really the way to describe the way that this summer qualifier has been going. You talk about going from several thousand down to just a couple thousand, down to 128, and then in just a few hours, all the way down to 32. We're gonna break down that stage for you three for you guys in depth in just a little bit. Stage four is coming your guys' way. It's gonna be a Swiss bracket, but it's a little bit interesting. So we'll talk about that a little more in depth and talking about in depth, AC is going to break down a great match between Line and Titone, all things that went right and all things that went wrong. But Rich, first, stage three was fun. The goaded one is still alive. Talk to me about this great, great day of action. Stage three was absolutely phenomenal, Andrew. We got some dream matchups, including very early in the competition, two former teammates, two former world champions going to head. That's right, Ruben, not of Team Queso anymore, now with SKC, not SK Gaming, very different. Up against I Am JP. This was a back and forth battle, but in the end, it was the golden haired golden boy from Barcelona, Spain, who came out on top, sending his teammate down to the lower bracket who would not end up making it all the way through. Some other great matchups. Air Surfer, one of the top players of all time out of the US of A, up against former Team Liquid player and Payne Gaming roster member Surge TS. This time, it was the American Air Surfer coming out on top with a big time win and qualifying for our next phase, that top 32. One of the biggest stories of the entire competition though, was the number one seed coming in none other than an all-time great, maybe the all-time great former world champion from Team Liquid. That's right, Surgical Goblin came in as the number one seed overall and had some ups and downs, won his first two, lost his qualifying match for the round of 32, but was able to battle back in the lower bracket with a big win over Digo 94 to move on to our final 32 and keep the hopes alive for everyone who's a big time fan of Surgical Goblin, which I know there's a lot of you out there right now. Another big story here, Yuya, ta talented, talented player, going up against a player who really should have qualified, it seems like, over and over and over again this year in the Frenchman Viper. Viper came so close so many times, and it happened once again here in those final moments. Viper with a couple of key mistakes. Yuya able to capitalize and take that win to move on to our next round. We'll see Viper again, hopefully back in 2023. Rounding out one of our big time matchups was an absolute slobber knocker, a back and forth battle between Nikoko and another popular American player and content creator in Boss. Boss got a big win, but like I said, this was a slobber knocker, back and forth fights. Not a single game really felt like it was in contention. Each one felt like the winner had it locked up. And in the final game, it was Boss who got absolutely ran through by a downhill push from Nikoko to take the win and qualify for that top 32. There were a ton of great games throughout this competition, many on stream, many off stream, but one of the best ones we're gonna break down right now. Let's go to Joshua AC Sharon for a look in at our game of the week. This is going to be line versus to tone. And I'm just going to be explaining all the great plays that happened throughout this match. It really starts off strong. So as soon as the game starts, we come into the match. A little bit of the game has already happened. And then immediately line is going to recognize log tornado and inferno tower are all out of cycle from to tone so what does he do so he immediately goes in with a mirrored royal hogs they do an exorbitant amount of damage and as soon as the game starts he already has the tower all the way down to uh you know he, he takes out a thousand damage worth of hp right here to tone immediately follows up with a beautiful delayed dash of the golden knight when i saw it i was thinking there's no shot that it goes to the crown tower what do I know? That's Tatone all day. Right here from Tatone, it was a 
beautiful timing of the delayed log. The, the skeletons were placed high, the ghost activates, and the ghost is about to swing. That's why the ghost stays activated. He delays the log just in time for the king tower plus the crown tower to do the final damage to it. And the ghost doesn't get a single shot on the tower. As soon as double elixir hits, that's when Lion believes that he can start having this all out assault on offense. And so I really like how he set up his first push. And it shows that he's really thinking about his placements because that's kind of the direction you want to go all the time. And it was it was perfectly placed, but even more perfectly defended. Right here was probably, I think it was probably my favorite play of the day. And it's something as simple as just using the double giant skeleton. It's not it's not a difficult play by any means, but I just love that he was recognizing that Tatone was catching up, Tatone was defending easily. So what do you have to do? You have to switch up your offense. You have to switch up your defense. Otherwise, you're going to have no shot once your opponent is in that groove where they can easily defend. A beautiful magic archer placement gets the lineup, gets the giant skeleton, gets the ghost, the, the fire spirit up high. It, it, just a great lineup overall from Tatone right here. Tatone finally gets the push that we were all waiting for. This is what everybody does with the Magic Archer NATO. He pulls everything together. I got excited. I know you're getting excited right now just watching this clip. Uh, he, he gets the lineup and he gets the damage. Beautiful final push. Gets the Tornado together. Gets the Royal Hogs going backwards, not even forwards. You have no offensive pressure when your building is up top. And then the Royal Hogs get distracted. The Magic Archer could have taken it out. The Golden Knight could have taken it out. The Log, the NATO... The, the, the goblin drill damage would have taken it out as well. I mean, just fantastic match overall. Both players played it so, so well. I think I've seen this match like four or five times now, just over and over again. I was so impressed overall. And uh, yeah, I mean, unfortunately, Tatone was not able to qualify overall. Line was, and that's just how it works. Fortunately, that's going to be it for me. I'm going to hand it back off to Andrew. Thanks a lot there, Josh, and you are not wrong, my friend. We are halfway through our qualifiers for Clash Royale League here in 2022. A million dollars on the line. Stage one, two, and three are in the books, and now we get to stage four, which is going to be airing tomorrow right here on this channel. What is it? Well, it's a Swiss bracket, but it's also triple elimination. So you might be asking me, how does that work? Well, all 32 players will compete in five rounds of competition. Players that win three matches or three of those rounds will advance to stage five. The players that lose three of those rounds or three of those matches will be eliminated. The top 16 will move on then to stage five, which will be taking place a week later on September 10th. It's the exact same thing with half as many people, 16 players, five rounds, you win three, you're in, you lose three, you're out. And then we have the last chance qualifier the next day on September 11th. They'll be seated into a single elimination bracket. One chance, one final opportunity to get that golden ticket. Josh, Rich, we got 32 players left in the entire world. Well, technically there's six more on top of that, but 32 that are still trying to get on through. Who is your dark horse pick to make it to world finals? Uh, AC, why not you start us off? I've looked through all the 32 players. Um, you know, I have a couple guys that I have my eye on. But I think the main guy that I was looking at was JP. Uh, I was re-watching his games last night. I was looking over, you know, where did Ruben go wrong? What did JP do right? And there was two plays. One was just an early recognition on a, a lack of elixir on Ruben's side. He was able to... Uh, just pressure both lanes correctly, and then he got a, uh, a, a just a hot start to the game. But then number two, he just won every bridge battle. And I think when you're winning every bridge battle, it just kind of shows that you're in a really good flow for the game. And I don't know. Uh, I was watching his games. It made me smile, and it made me think that JP's going to make it. Well, Rich, you know, JP, not really a, a huge dark horse out there in the world, but it has been a couple years since he was a guy that was really in the mix. Uh, who do you got as a dark horse pick going to our world finals? You know, Andrew, my pick's a little bit borderline here for this one, and some people may agree that it is, and some people may agree it isn't. That's Adriel, who has been competitive for a very long time in Clash Royale, but I said this on our live broadcast this last weekend that I wasn't convinced, and that's because we haven't seen much of him since his excellent end-of-year performance in 2021. He didn't participate in a lot of the big events, didn't go far in a lot of the big events. And uh, afterwards, the the coach and uh, analyst for Adriel, who's one of the best in the business and part of why I'm picking
picking him. Uh, Jeebus reached out and pointed out to me that Adriel hasn't been to, able to play or practice much this year because of school and didn't really start kicking into high gear until the Ecopa All-Stars and moving into this event. So that's kind of why I'm picking him. I think we haven't seen the best of Adriel this season, obviously, but now that he has the time and dedication to focus on competing in Clash Royale, I think he has a very good shot at making top 10 and a trip to World Finals. Yeah, I, I love that pick for Adriel. He was probably, I was like, is he too good because of what he did before? But I think what you're saying, the fact that we've seen very little of him this year is very, very relevant. Uh, for me, I'm gonna go with a guy that we've seen a lot of this year and a lot of last year in Hugo. The guy from France, the Frenchman. I think he's a great, great player. I honestly know he has the skill to get to World Finals. We've seen it. I love his deck choices. We've seen it in Game Stars. We've seen it in Masters. We've seen it in Masters Challenge. There's so many things that he does right. But I do think when it comes to that top level, that S tier plus, those final moments, the grand finals, that he kind of gets in his head a little bit. So I believe he will make it to World Finals. Whether he's able to take that 250K is a different conversation but I think he'll be there. Well, those are all great picks. And for those of you watching at home, you don't have to necessarily watch at home for Clash Royale League World Finals. We talked about it this whole time. Yes, it's September 23rd through 25th in Helsinki, Finland, but it will be live at the Helsinki Exhibition and Convention Center with a Clash Fest, not just Clash Royale, but Clash of Clans World Finals as well. You can come and get in on the action and enjoy all things part of the Clash universe. So there'll be more information on that, how you get tickets very, very soon, but hopefully we'll see you there. And Andrew, if they want more information on that, and everything about the Clash Royale competitive scene, what do they got to do? Esports.clashroyale.com. All the information is there about the events, when they start, what round we're in, maybe where to get tickets. Go check out that site. Subscribe here to the channel. You don't want to miss any of the action. As you guys heard, we got action coming tomorrow, the week after that, and then the day after that. We've got three more broadcasts coming your way over the next couple weeks. And then, of course, World Finals will be right here on this channel at Esports Royale EN on Twitter. Give us all a follow as well. And make sure that you guys do not miss any action as we're about to close out our year and give away that million-dollar prize. On behalf of everybody here at Clash Royale Esports, I'm Rich Slayton, that's Andrew Guy, Joshua, AC, Sharon. We cannot wait to see you in Helsinki this September 23rd and 25th, and see you back here next time on Three Crowns.